Hey guys and welcome to another exciting quick tutorial where I will share some cool filmmaking tips and tricks without boring you for a full 30 minutes. Do you ever feel frustrated when you export a very large file from Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects because the program interface gets locked up and you can't actually do anything else until the export is completed? Or maybe you simply want to convert a large number of audio or video files between different formats. Adobe Media Encoder can solve all of those problems and today I want to talk about how to use it and how you can use it to improve your workflow when you're exporting your videos from Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects. Adobe Media Encoder is a tool that allows you to encode video and audio material to and from a very large variety of different formats. You can use it as a standalone program to convert your media files and the reason I'm personally using it, it integrates seamlessly into Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects and allows you to keep working while it exports your video file in the background. It is important to note that Adobe Media Encoder is not actually available as a standalone download. It comes bundled together with Premiere Pro or Adobe After Effects, so if you have either of those programs installed, you also already have Adobe Media Encoder installed on your computer. But enough talking, it is much easier to just show you how to use it and what you can do with it, so let's jump right into the tutorial. No, obviously this is not Adobe Media Encoder, this is Premiere Pro. The reason I want to start here is because I want to show you how well Adobe Media Encoder integrates with Premiere Pro and Adobe After Effects mainly because that is the primary reason why I started using it in the first place. Let's assume you finished your edit in Premiere Pro. The one I have here is from my There's a video for that video that I released a couple of weeks ago. And you now want to export your sequence. Usually you highlight the sequence in your project, go up to File, Export, Media, and this will bring up the Export dialog. In here you configure your export settings like the format, your presets, effects, your video, audio, etc, etc. And then you hit export. Now the problem is that this export process will lock up Premiere Pro. You can no longer do anything with the tool until it is done encoding your video. Now if you have a very short video or you've got a monster of a machine to crunch through the encoding process, this may not be too much of an issue for you because it may only take a couple of minutes. However, if you're exporting very long videos or you have a slow computer, this can lock up Premiere for a couple of hours and that's a bit of a bummer. Instead of exporting the video directly through Premiere Pro, we can actually export it using Adobe Media Encoder. Let's cancel the encoding process. In order to export this sequence with Adobe Media Encoder instead, rather than clicking the export button, let's click the Q button that is just on the left side. This will bring up Adobe Media Encoder. This is the interface for Adobe Media Encoder and it has automatically added our sequence called Final into the render queue. Before we continue, let me give you a very quick overview of the interface for the Adobe Media Encoder. You basically have four individual panels. On the top left, you have your rendering queue. This is where you will see all of the items, the videos, the sequences or compositions from Premiere Pro, After Effects or your hard drive that you've added to the queue and all of these will be encoded when you kick this off. Over on the right hand side, you will find the preset browser. This is where you find all of the presets for encoding different types of video and audio for cinema, web or whatever else your requirements might be. On the bottom left, you will find the encoding panel. Once Adobe Media Encoder starts the encoding process, down here you will find some information about the item that is currently being processed as well as the progress and you'll see a little bit of a preview. On the bottom right hand side you will find the Watch Folders panel. And this is actually really cool. You can tell Adobe Media Encoder to watch certain folders on your hard drive and anytime you drop a new media file into these folders, Adobe Media Encoder will automatically pick them up and process them using the specified preset. Now that was probably boring enough, let's start actually encoding our file and for that let's just go up to the top of the render queue and over the, on the right hand side you will find a start button. Let's simply press the start button and Adobe Media Encoder will start encoding our sequence. Down in the encoding panel as I've promised you get a little bit of a preview of what is going on, the current frame and some information on how the video file is being encoded. Now, this is very similar to what happens in Premiere Pro. However, if we now return to Premiere Pro, you can see that I can still use the program. I can continue editing, I can open a new project, do something else. All the while, Adobe Media Encoder encodes my sequence in the background. 
To me, this was probably one of the biggest selling points to start using Adobe Media Encoder in the first place. Now, I'm not going to wait until this encoding process is done. Instead, I'm going to go up to the top of the render queue and hit stop. No, I don't want to finish this file. And we've stopped the exporting process. There's actually an even simpler way to get your sequences into Adobe Media Encoder. I'll quickly jump back to Adobe Premiere Pro and drag this over to the right hand side. Any sequence that you have in your project, you can actually simply select. So here I've got an initial edit sequence and simply drag this over into the queue for the Adobe Media Encoder. Let go. And there you go. Your sequence has been added to the queue and you can now encode it as usual. And the process is just as easy if you're using Adobe After Effects. Let's hop over into Adobe After Effects. And I have a composition here that I used for the intro to my proxies tutorial. And again, usually in order to export this composition, you would go up to composition and add to render queue. This again, if you render this out, will render directly from Adobe After Effects and it will lock up the interface. So again, you can't do anything until the export process is completed. So let's stop this, go back to our composition. Now go up to the menu, click on composition. And this time we're going to select add to Adobe Media Encoder queue. And to absolutely no one's surprise, this has added my After Effects composition into the Adobe Media Encoder rendering queue. From here, I can now encode the composition without locking up Adobe After Effects. And just like you can drag sequences from your Premiere Pro project into the rendering queue of the Media Encoder, you can also do the same in After Effects. So let's hop back over into After Effects. Let me drag this over a little bit. And you can now drag and drop compositions directly from your project folder into the rendering queue for the Adobe Media Encoder. And being a general media encoder, you can of course always drag and drop any video or audio files from your hard drive directly into the queue. Now, before we blindly hit the start button, you may want to change the format, the preset or the output file for all of the items you have in your queue. For example, this intro After Effects composition is currently set to use the H.264 codec, which is probably my favorite for anything I upload into the web. The preset is set to YouTube 1080p, but this dropdown I really don't like. It's really, really long, goes way off screen and I have a pretty big screen. Instead, I much prefer to use the preset browser over on the right hand side. In the preset browser, you will find both user-defined presets, so these are my personal presets, as well as system presets. The preset I personally like to use for anything I upload to YouTube, you can find in the web video category. Obviously under YouTube, you will find the YouTube 1080p HD preset. In order to apply a preset to an item in your queue, you can simply pick it up and drag and drop it on the preset tab. Obviously this is not going to change anything because it already uses the YouTube 1080p HD preset, but you can easily swap them out like this. Finally, on the right hand side, you can simply click on the output file name and specify the file name and the folder where you want your files to be exported. And once you're all set up with all of the items in your queue, then you hit start queue and Adobe Media Encoder will do the rest. The very last thing I want to show you is how to use the watch folders just because I think it's kind of a really nifty feature. Let's assume I have an empty footage folder somewhere in my hard drive and any file that I drop into here, I want to automatically encode into a different format. In order to do that, I can go into Adobe Media Encoder, under Watch Folders, simply hit the plus. Now let's find the folder that I want to use as my Watch Folder. Hit Select Folder. Now we have set this folder up as a Watch Folder and every Watch Folder has a specific format, preset and an output folder that Adobe Media Encoder will automatically apply to any file we drop into it. Let me quickly change the preset over to YouTube 480p just because it'll go a little bit quicker. H.264 is still fine. Before I start dropping files into the watch folder, let me quickly clear the current queue. So let's return to the queue, Control A to select everything and then hit delete. Yep, I'm sure I want to remove them all. And now let's bring up the watch folder. It's this one here. Adobe Media Encoder has automatically created an output folder inside this watch folder and this is where all of the encoded files will end up in. Over here, I have two clips that I recorded for another tutorial. Let's drag these clips into our designated watch folder and let's keep an eye on the queue of the Adobe Media Encoder. And there's Screen One Movie automatically added to the queue and the Media Encoder has already started processing the file. There's Screen Two Movie. If we were to let this run all the way through, both encoded files would end up in the output subdirectory of my watch folder. 
But because this is going to take forever, I'm going to abort this process. No, I don't want to continue this file. And Adobe Media Encoder has moved on to the other file, so let's stop that as well. One last quick tip before I let you get back to your life. You can actually apply multiple presets to a single item in your queue or to a single watch folder. For example, I have a Premiere Pro screen recording clip here. Right now, that will get encoded with the YouTube 480p SD preset. However, let's say I want to create a second video as well of this, rather than duplicating this item with a different preset, I can actually grab a different preset, let's say a Vimeo preset, 720p, and rather than dragging it onto the preset, I drag it onto the item itself. That will create a second export task. So this clip will now get encoded both with Vimeo 720p and as YouTube 480p. And the same works for watch folders. You can drag any number of presets onto a single watch folder and whenever you drop a media file into that folder, Adobe Media Encoder will automatically pick up that file and encode it with every single preset that you've specified. I hope this gives you a good overview of what you can do with Adobe Media Encoder and why you would want to use it. Personally, ever since I started using it, I can't imagine going back. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and as always, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions, just leave them down in the section below. If you did enjoy this video, I would greatly appreciate it if you could give it a thumbs up, favorite it and share it with the world. And if you do want to see more cool filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, don't forget to go to youtube.com slash surfaced studio and subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.